Hello. So right here we have an inverting op amp. So here we've got the chip and everything's wired up the way it is described in part one and the circuit diagram. So we have two resistors here, R2 and R1, and the ratio between them signifies the gain that we'll experience inputting the signal. So this one is about 5.1 kilo ohms and this one is one kilo ohm. So the ratio is around five. But since it's an inverting amplifier, the signal is going to be inverted. So really it's going to be negative one times five, which is negative five. Here, now we have a diagram that will depict our slew rate. So you can see that it's not a perfect square wave because the signal takes time to propagate through the amp. So you've got a slightly diagonal line and we measured this using the cursor function and it's about 230 volts per millisecond. The same trend is shown on the falling edge of the square wave where it doesn't immediately jump from one voltage to another. It takes time for the signal to make its way through the amp. So now we have a negative slew rate of about 240 volts per millisecond which is similar to on the other side. I'm going to show you the sine wave that we got. So we have inputted a sine wave with zero offset and an amplitude of 0.1 volts. And as you can see, the peak here is about 0.1 volts of the input, which is yellow. And the peak of the output is about 0.5. So 0.1 times five, which is our gain, is 0.5. So this accurately describes what the inverting amplifier is doing. And it's important to note that the output signal is the negative version of sine that is inputted. So when you have a peak with the output, there's a trough with the input. So I'm going to show you now our voltage follower circuit. So here, R2, which is the numerator of the gain function, is zero, and R1, which is the denominator, is infinity. Thus, the ratio is a big fat zero, so we will have no gain from this amplifier. So you can see this as the sine waves are almost identical, just a little phase shift because it takes time for the signal to propagate, and there's a slew rate in this, of course, which we've measured up here. You can see it's not a perfect, when we put the square wave in, it's not a perfect up and down. There's a little bit of time that it takes, so that's why the phase has shifted on this wave. So I will now describe the differential op amp. We have four resistors here instead of two, which corresponds to the circuit described in the lab procedures. So we have a new gain constant. Well, it's the same gain constant as before, but now we have two different voltages going into the differential op amp. But this is a common mode gain. So V1 is equal to V2. So when you're calculating the output voltage, it's the ratio between the resistors times V2 minus V1. Since V2 is equal to V1, the output voltage will be zero, as you can see in this diagram. Compared to the input, the output is so close to zero, it's almost like it's zero. And if you zoom in, you can see that the yellow is the input, the blue is the output, and the amplitude of the output signal is nine millivolts from peak to peak. So the common mode gain is the peak to peak value of the blue square wave divided by the peak to peak value of the yellow square wave. So the blue is the output and the yellow is the input. So 9.1 millivolts divided by the input which is one full volt. And that's a very small number which corresponds to the fact that the output is zero in this setup of the differential op amp. So now we have a differential op amp with another setup. So V2 is connected directly to ground instead of to V1. So now in the formula, we have the gain, which is the ratio between the resistors, which is five, times the difference between the two voltages. Since one is now zero, it's only the voltage that is still connected to the function generator. So that's going to be five times the input.